Hello, everyone. I'm Lou Marinoff, a philosopher and author. You are about to watch a video that summarizes the extraordinary life, beautiful music, and turbulent times of Fernando Sor, the great Spanish composer and guitarist. It was his ambition and destiny to elevate the guitar from the taverns of Spain to the concert halls of Europe. The video and summary themselves are based on my new novel called Fernando, Beethoven of the Guitar, a trilogy of historical fiction. Book one has just been published in English. Books two and three will follow in the next few months. Fernando came of age during the Napoleonic era. His friends and peers in Spain were liberal reformists who endorsed the values of the Enlightenment. But like thousands of Spanish liberals, Fernando found himself torn by Napoleon's invasion of Iberia. On the one hand, he welcomed secular reforms. On the other, he did not want them imposed by an invading army. Moreover, his heart was broken by the ensuing Peninsular War, the immense suffering of his people, and the total devastation of his homeland. Fernando wrote a moving appeal for peace, harmony, and unity, to no avail at the time. When Napoleon was finally driven out of Spain, Spanish liberals, including Fernando, were themselves exiled by the tyrant King Ferdinand VII. Yet only by leaving his beloved homeland could Fernando fulfill his magnificent musical destiny. Fernando became famous throughout Europe, and his Parisian friends, some of whom you will glimpse in the video, formed the vanguard of the never-ending struggle for liberty, democracy, and human rights. Nor was Fernando the last great Spanish artist to be exiled by tyranny. History repeated itself with Pablo Casals and Andres Segovia, among others, who in the 20th century fled the dictatorship of Franco. Fernando and his fellow artists were politically engaged by the necessity of circumstance and the duty of moral conscience, but he never betrayed his lifelong devotion to music. In consequence, Fernando not only left an explicitly rich musical legacy, but also taught an implicitly pertinent philosophical lesson. The lesson is this. For those of us who work to build cultures of peace, the Age of Enlightenment cannot be regarded solely as a singular turning point in history. For just as the earth continues to revolve daily on its axis, so every day of our lives must become a new turning point in the rebirth of Enlightenment values and the re-enchantment of the world. Liberty must constantly be safeguarded against tyranny. Equality must continuously be asserted over injustice. Fraternity must ceaselessly be championed above hostility. Art serves these purposes surpassingly well. It creates outer beauty that outlives the ugliness of war. It confers inner freedom that transcends the fetters of oppression. It engenders brilliance in performers and stirs appreciation in audiences. All great art flows from love and creativity, the perennial antidotes to hatred and destructiveness. Thus, the story of Fernando is a story of us all. The tale of his times is a tale for all times. I hope it inspires you to make good cause with trying circumstances as he did, to create value for others as he did, and to leave this world a better place than he found it, as he did, and as I know you are all actively doing yourselves.